Brothers and sisters, soon voters will be heading to the polls to elect and re-elect candidates at the local, state, and federal levels. And the stakes are high for our members in our profession. And because elected officials and those who they appoint have such tremendous impact on our members' jobs and lives, once again, your union has taken the lead in supporting our friends in both parties. Our political principle is simple. We support candidates who support firefighters and EMS professionals. We aren't tied to the DNC or the RNC. We're not an echo chamber for the AFL-CIO. We are a voice for our members in this union, period. That's why we stood strong for Senator Thad Cochran, a Republican from Mississippi, who helped save and fund the FIRE Act and Safer Grant programs in his contentious primary and in this general election. It's why we're standing with Republican Susan Collins, who has supported every major IFF initiative, including collective bargaining. And it's why we are backing the GOP representative who's running for the Senate in the open West Virginia seat. At the same time, we are there for our Democratic friends, like Mary Landrew in Louisiana, who stepped up to support collective bargaining against massive opposition within her state and who used her chair of the Homeland Security Appropriations Committee to insist on providing safer waivers to save jobs and bring thousands of our brothers and sisters back from layoffs. It's why we're standing strong to re-elect Mark Udall in Colorado, Mark Pryor in Arkansas, Gene Shaheen in New Hampshire, and Mark Begich in Alaska, because they have carried our water on every issue and now they face tough challenges. Because we stick to our principles, elected leaders in Congress know they can count on us. So regardless of who controls the U.S. House of Representatives, we'll still have access to the leadership of both the majority and the minority. But in the U.S. Senate, we're presented with more of a challenge. There's probably a 50-50 chance that control of the Senate will flip to the Republicans. And it's easy to talk about supporting our friends, but here's the reality in this election. And many of our members may not like this, but it's in our best interest to keep Democrats in control in the Senate. Now, I know a lot of our members don't support the president, and many of our members are conservative, which is their right to choose where they stand on the issues personal to them. But it's this union's job, it's why we are all elected, to watch out for our members on the issues related to their health and safety, their quality of life, and building a secure retirement. Simply put, a Republican-controlled Senate is bad for our members on all of those scores. A GOP Senate puts Orrin Hatch in charge of the Finance Committee. His Pension Transparency Act would destroy defined benefit systems as we know them today. The current majority keeps his proposal bottled up in committee. The current majority makes sure his proposal never sees the light of day on the U.S. Senate floor. But if his party controls the Senate... He will have the power as the committee chair to pass it. A GOP Senate majority leader will bring it to the Senate floor. And with a Republican House, who knows if we can stop it. Mike Enzi, an anti-collective bargaining senator who supports right to work and opposes public sector FLSA, would be running the Labor Committee. David Vitter, a shill for the chemical industry, would take over the Environmental Committee. What will that do for addressing toxic flame retardants? You tell me. In this election, we all need to have each other's backs and put those issues that some identify as cultural, wedge, or divisive aside, as critical and personal as they may be, because we can't take those risks. That's why we're working to elect Michelle Nunn in Georgia and Allison Lundgren Grimes in Kentucky. We need to protect our members' future. On the state level, we're working with our state associations and locals to defend labor-friendly governors and state legislatures and take out our enemies. We can beat Paula Page in Maine, Rick Scott in Florida, Rick Snyder in Michigan, Tom Corbett in Pennsylvania, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, and others who have attacked our pensions, workplace rights, and livelihoods. They have to go. While we are supporting our friends, including those in really tough fights like Pat Quinn in Illinois, Dan Malloy in Connecticut, Martha Coakley in Massachusetts, and John Hickenlooper in Colorado. You know, I've always said elections have consequences. The battle lines have been drawn. 
Our members' jobs, their pensions, their families' future will be decided on November 4th. Don't allow our members to underestimate the power of their voice and vote in this election. We need to motivate our members. We need to get them out on Election Day to vote. We need to encourage them to get their friends and families to vote. Good luck to you all. God bless you and this IAFF of ours.